Well, one of the things I do outside of mortgages is I work with charity groups. One of them is the Dr. Ross's Healing Place. I'm the president of the board there. And one of their offshoots is the Changa House at the youth center that they're building. So in as I was uh, elected as a president, one of the things I wanted to do getting into business was to be able to give back. So using my network in, in my industry, I can raise funds to be able to put towards my passion, which is working with youth and charities and stuff like that. A Chanka House is there to provide a haven, a place for kids to go to, to keep them out of trouble, really. I mean, if I had to, to simplify it is, after school, a lot of kids have nowhere to go, and they, they're looking for somewhere to, to be safe. And instead of letting them roam the streets, get into trouble, there's a place they can go and hang out, have a good time. Uh, maybe learn something and, and have good mentors around them. So that's one of the charities. Uh, it is at the Royal Ontario Golf Club, which is out at Trafalgar in Milton. And uh, it's around lunchtime, four or five hours. It'll be a good time. There'll be a variety of people there um, working on uh, getting a variety of people. I don't want all professionals. I want it to be a fun family event as well. I want people to have a good time, so next year they'll come back again. Um, and one of the other charities we're working with is Breakfast for Learning, which is basically a charity that helps to feed children in schools. There's a lot of uh, kids that go to school hungry every day, and those are things that impact them from learning. Right. So if they're not fed, they get to school, they're distracted, they lose attention, and one of the charities that we're promoting is Breakfast for Learning. That's a Dominion Lending Center uh, charity. So all the proceeds from this golf tournament is going to be going towards half of it's to Changa House, half it's to Breakfast for Learning. I, I think it's an opportunity to engage with uh, other Caribbean people about issues related to the Caribbean and of course I think diaspora people do have opportunities uh, uh, as in this forum to engage in the political, social and economic issues of the Caribbean that are all of us are affected by or if they do affect us directly they affect relatives of ours. My particular area is inter of interest or what I'll be talking about has to do with diaspora youth and the educational tra trajectory. I don't think it is what we would have liked. I, I think today's young people are not going to university or not getting the education that their grandparents and parents received when we first came to this country. So therefore, we have to develop some kind of a some kind of methods of how we're going to be helping them and relating to their situation to make them much more successful, both academically and in terms of, and socially. Oh, I see. Yeah. Jamaican the Caribbean experience, a mm -hmm. uh, 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 multiculturalizing experience. And I have another one which is life at the intersection, uh, class, youth and community. That was done about looking at Jane Finch and the issues related to that community. Again, looking at the academic tra trajectory of the youth in that community. World famous Indian astrologer and psychic reader, Pandit Mahendra Sharma, welcomes you. He visited several Caribbean countries and now here in Canada. He helps solve your problems with business, work, health, love, marriage disputes, fertility, sexual problems, evil spirits, education abroad chances speaks English, Hindi, and Tamil. He's an expert in hand reading, face reading, and numerology. For info call 647-963-4739.
Kasim is a mortgage professional who puts your needs first. With over 15 years of lending experience, he'll provide you with honest, efficient, and personalized service. Make Asif Kasim your first call for all your financing needs at 416-561-1258 or visit him online at theintegrityprofessionals.com. You're watching Caribbean Vibrations, you know what's the Easter long weekend, and we checked out all the fets, all the reggae things, this thing to do, but we decided to check out a little something different, Sunday Night Live, featuring Glenn Lewis and my man beside me, Mr. Aon Clark. How you doing tonight, sir? How are you? Good. I'm blessed, man. How are you? I'm pretty good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. It's our first time with you on the show. Yeah. So for our viewers who don't know about you, tell us how Aon Clark got his start. Uh, I think I got my start uh, in the industry. I've been singing since I was three years old in church, uh, but I got my first start when I got a song on uh, Rihanna's second album. It's called Them Haters. Uh, myself and Melanie Fiona wrote it. So uh, that's how I got my start in the industry. Now I gotta give big props to Melanie Fiona, another big Canadian props. person, West Indian background, doing Absolutely. big things. So if people wanna hear something about music, what's different about your music though? You know, I think just the fact that I'm from Toronto, I grew up in, in Toronto, uh, on the radio you hear different genres and you hear rock, you hear country, you hear alternative music and you hear the hip hop and R&B. So you, you kind of take those things and put them all together and uh, you know, whatever comes out, comes out. And it's always something a little different, a little more cutting edge. So it's fantastic. So yeah. if I was to go check out your phone, pull out some of the songs that have been repeated the most, what's, what are you listening to right now? You're definitely going to find some Coldplay. Uh, I love Chris Martin. Uh, you're going to hear some Bob Marley, some classic Bob Marley, some Marvin Gaye. Uh, just anything that's, uh, you know, creating some textures and melodies and colors and things like that. I'm into all that type of stuff. So I'm into every genre of music. As long as it's great music, I'm into it. Okay, two-part question. Yeah. Who's an artist that you'd like to like work with in the rock genre? And then another one in the Caribbean music genre. Absolutely would love to work with um, Chris Martin in the rock genre. In the Caribbean genre, you know, obviously this can't happen, but rest in peace to Bob Marley, of course. I would love, I would have loved to have been able to vibe out with him or anybody from that era, definitely. Now people are going to see you performing tonight. What should they expect from you? Uh, you can expect some new music. Uh, I've been working in the studio for the past year, coming up with some new vibes, some new sounds. I'm really excited to uh, share them. Also, some classic stuff like Do You Right and uh, my, my new single, Ready, that's out on G98.7. They're always playing my music, so uh, it's just going to be a, a, a lot of fun. been out here supporting the uh, the latest album that came out 2013 moment of truth been doing a lot of spot dates you know just finished up a little bit of a European run and doing some dates stateside and you know hitting uh, obviously got to hit the hometown so you know doing that now and mostly my focus also has been uh, working on new material for the new album you know working towards a new album for 2015 so that's really the focus right now well, actually that's what I got to talk to you about you were just, I saw you on Instagram in Paris, because we do follow you on Instagram. Oh, okay. How big is social media for you as an artist? Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's amazing because it creates a, it's a different type of uh, connection to, you know, fans that essentially you kind of become friends with, you know. It, it's, a, it's an intimate kind of connection. It's, it's, it's kind of cool, you know, you're able to share, like, pockets of your life with, uh, with people that, are interested in the music, but then it's a step further and they get an opportunity to get a glimpse of, you know, what I'm up to, what I'm doing, and it, it kind of adds a personal touch. 
Is there a favorite social media? Because some people are big on Twitter, some people are big on Facebook. Um, I mean, I, I kind of like it all for the fact that all of it's sort of interesting. Like Twitter, you know, you got them 140 characters to get whatever point across or whatever it is that, you know, is, um, is sort of like your motto for the day, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, that's kind of a cool way to connect with folks. Facebook, of course, is cool because you can open up and, you know, there's no limitations. You can share whatever it is you're thinking or, you know, you might have a, a personal thought that you can put as a part of your notes or, or whatever it is. So it's, it's maybe a little bit more personal. And then uh, Instagram is just kind of cool because, you know, you can get a little bit creative with the visuals and, you know, getting people to see what you're into, what your likes are, your dislikes, or, you know, what's happening with you, what's important, or what's, you know, what's exciting in your life. So it's all sort of creative. It's a cool way to connect all of them. I like all of them. Sammy's Roti and Doubles is an amazing place to get authentic West Indian cuisine. Located in the heart of Scarborough, we're told we have the best doubles in the city. Come on by and visit us. And we also cater. Sammy's Roti and Doubles. Call 647-748-8959. Island Mix Restaurant and Lounge is the place to socialize and relax with family and friends for any occasion. Located in Pickering and Vaughan, we have a great Caribbean and Chinese menu. Whether you come for lunch, enjoy a family dinner, or just have a drink with that special someone, we have the place for you. Check us out at www.islandmix.ca. Island Mix. Come taste the mix. You're watching Caribbean Vibrations, and we're here at the UE Toronto Alumni Gala, the one and only Miss Tessa Ann Chen. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Okay, so I really enjoyed your performance, actually, at Cast Tuesday in Trinidad. Because <laughs> uh, I was there, and I was like, what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> now, everybody knows you from the voice, but I gotta be a little selfish. I really enjoyed Hideaway, and one of the videos I enjoyed the most was the one you did with Kess. Oh, in the high low in Trinidad, I know it was our shots and everything like that. So, how did you meet Kess, and how did that even come about? I met Kez, he reached out to me, he reached out to my team, and um, he's just one of the sweetest, nicest guys you'll ever meet, and not just him, his brothers, band, you know, great set of guys. So, I mean, I... Like I said, Hideaway, I really enjoy that song. But I mean, people don't understand the background you come from with your parents and the carnations. And everything. What do you think the toughest thing was for you in the whole music industry as you went from going behind the scenes to in front of the mic? What was one of the hardest things for you? I think just staying motivated and staying hopeful because, as, you know, anybody knows this business can be a beast and it can bully you and beat you up sometimes. So, you know, definitely picking yourself up when you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I can take another hit, you know, but that is what this industry about is getting up even when you feel like you can't again and you know I said it before today like music it chooses you you don't choose it so it's it's in you to do it so for me that was the hardest thing was just staying motivated in the times when I just felt like oh nothing I'm doing is working nothing is going and you know thank God <laughs> thank God it would happen in some way well, well I, I have to believe that yeah now now that you've done the voice and things are going on what would you really like to do now that you can choose a lot of different things now what is it you really like to do I wouldn't be doing anything else I love what I'm doing I love working on the album I can't wait to, to share the album with everybody and having the opportunities to work with these amazing people like Dan Warren and you know um, Toby Gad, uh, amazing amazing people and um, this is my life this is what I've always dreamed of doing you know on any scale it's just to wake up every morning and be able to say I, I can sing because I believe that's my gift and before the voice I kind of made up my mind that okay Maybe it's not going in the way I think it is. Maybe, you know, I just know I'm going to wake up and sing, whether it's in a hotel <laughs> or the Grammys or a cruise ship. I was put here to sing. So whatever way you see fit, 